And that is the end of our formal presentation. Alan, did you have anything you wanted to add before we go on to our Q&A? Uh, uh, happy to answer any questions anybody has about the program. Um, all right, great. And you all, all, the audience here today, feel free to put any questions you have in the Q&A. I did receive some questions in advance, so I will go to those first. And the first question is, are all courses offered at all during the year? Can I start the coursework in the summer? Yep, you know, so you can start the course, coursework uh, during any of the terms. Um, and many students do that. Um, not everybody starts in the fall, like people traditionally do. Um, people, some people start in the fall, some in the winter, some in the summer. Um, as far as uh, courses being offered every, every term, um, the core courses, the, the required courses, uh, generally are offered every term. The electives um, may or may not be. It just depends a little bit on uh, uh, the the schedule of the other programs of, by which those um, where those electives are housed. All right, great. Thanks for that. The next question in the Q and A is the total cost of the the program. Um, right now, classes are four thousand seven hundred and fifty five dollars per course. Um, and so we suggest students to budget between 48 and 50,000 to include your books. Um, there are no additional or hidden fees. The only additional fee would be the $100 graduation fee. 78% of our students actually um, have an employer benefit. And so their employer pays for their graduate studies. So you definitely wanna check with your employer to see if that is um, a way that you can finance your education. I will also put a link in the chat for additional information about admissions and aid. The next question from Leah, do we need a letter of recommendation or will it help to have in lieu of not meeting GPA in undergrad? Um, so it's it's not required um, or needed um, and uh, it generally wouldn't consider it, um, you know, something in lieu of uh, meeting GPA as an undergrad. Uh, generally what we're looking for is a solid academic uh, performance um, as an undergrad and or as in graduate school. Um, and then also professional experience. Uh, those, are, those are the key things, the academic experience as well as professional experience. Sorry, I was muted. All right, great, thanks for that. Guys, feel free to submit your questions on the Q&A right now while you have us live. I will go to the questions I received in advance while you all think of good questions. How much time do you suggest we put toward our studies per week? Yeah, I think nominally um, rule of thumb is on the order of 10 to 12 hours a week per course. Um, in, uh, varies from uh, you know week to week and from course to course. I'll say that uh, the courses are not lightweight. There is a good bit of effort you need to put in, um, and you know the you know it's uh, they're generally tailored towards well the program is tailored towards working professionals. So we recognize people have uh, you know day jobs, um, and uh, and so that that you know sort of the implication there is uh, people have to make a judgment call in terms of uh, school work life balance in terms of of you know taking on a course um, or multiple courses in a given term all right great thanks for that i did not receive any additional questions but alan why don't you talk a little bit about um asyn asynchronous versus virtual live courses and flexibility offered uh for students taking the courses Right. Yeah. So all of the um, all of the um, required courses that we that associated with the program are um, strictly online um, and asynchronous. Um, the, the electives are mostly that also, uh, the, though there might be some options to take some virtual live uh, elective courses. Um, so the the reason why we built the um, the uh, the um, the the bulk of the courses uh, as fully online is is just to, to really um you know tailor things to the working professional that we know could be in vastly different time zones um and to just build in the maximum flexibility in terms of um when you review the lecture material um so while the uh 
you know, you, the, the courses are executed asynchronously. Um, the professors will have uh, scheduled office hours um, one or more times a week. And, uh, and that's an opportunity to interact um, um, online with, uh, with the instructor as well as uh, classmates. Um, I guess just, you know, I just do a little, add a little color commentary to the nature of the program um, beyond uh, what was just uh, reviewed in the, in the slide presentation. Um, you know, the, 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 um, the required courses, um, are, as I mentioned, there's six of them. Uh, the first one, Introduction to Healthcare Systems Engineering, is, uh, is basically a, an overview of all the other courses, uh, the required courses that you'll, that you'll be taking. Um, so you get a little bit of a um, sort of hit the treetops, if you will, of the various subjects uh, that you'll go deeper into uh, in, the, in the subsequent classes. Um, and those subsequent cl classes take you through the system development life cycle. So it starts out um, helping you formulate an approach to envisioning what the future state uh, is and for, for healthcare uh, challenges that you want to resolve. Um, and then once you've gotten a handle on defining that future state, um, get a good handle on the current state, and then the courses walk you through the methodical process of going from current to future. Um, and then the, the, the sixth required class, which is actually the 10th class you would take, is a capstone class. And um, in the capstone, you'll take um, all the uh, skills that you onboarded from the six required courses plus the four electives, and, and apply them to a, a healthcare challenge. Um, and so, um, you know, that, that could range to uh, across a number of different, different, you know, applications or scenarios or, 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 um, you know, challenges. It could be like something to new technology to improve, um, you know, workflow for, let's say nurses, um, it could be, uh, technology to, um, to enhance a uh, user experience for an individual, maybe an elderly person, um, and, uh, and it just could be a, a wide range of, of different, different topics you might tackle. Um, and the, in the term before you take the capstone, you'll, you'll work with the advisor to formulate what a problem statement is um, that will get reviewed and approved. And then that will allow you to hit the ground running as you enter that capstone phase. Um, the, um, the, uh, the, um, the, the electives that you'll take, um, I'll just speak a little bit about those. Um, as Ayana mentioned, they're from some of the other, I guess, uh, companion programs, I'll call them, uh, within the, within the uh, JHU. Um, there are opportunities to take courses from the Applied Biomedical Engineering Program, from the System Engineering Program, um, and then also from the Bloomberg School of Public Health. And those electives will help um, and they'll help um, enrich uh, the learning, learning experience and your and the skills you you pick up as you go, um, you know, as you go through the program. And uh, you know, these are things you can apply in the capstone and then also uh, in, in your in your daily, um, you know, activities at, at work. Um, I see a question there regarding the example of a capstone project. Um, I'll just mention that you know the program is relatively new, right? So uh, Anna mentioned we enrolled uh, students back in the spring of 2018. So we hadn't have a lot of time for many students to progress through the program yet. We've we've had one person uh, progress all the way through uh, through the capstone to graduate, um, and we have several more coming through the pipeline. The um, so as as an example of a capstone, I can give you two actually. Uh, the one is the one graduate that we've had in this program. Um, she, uh, this was an individual who worked in a hospital system, and uh, she recognized the the need for improvements to um, uh, basically supply chain management system within a hospital enterprise to uh, reduce waste. Um, so the idea would be to use things like RFIDs and barcoding uh, to, to to track supply chain items, and you can say, oh well, that, that actually exists in the healthcare field today. You can actually, you know. There, there are companies that um, you know, provide solutions to, let, to that, and that's that's true. Um, what what the student did though was kind of stay, step back and then um, envision what a system like that would look like using the systems approach, um, and then she went through and did the um, and developed all the sort of engineering artifacts that you would want to put together uh, to describe what problem you're trying to solve and how you go about solving it. The other example 
um, that I can give as a capstone wasn't actually from our program uh, because this individual graduated before this program had um, really launched. Um, he was he, he was in our companion program, the systems engineering program. Um, and uh, it turns out that he was he's an intensivist, so a critical care doctor. And um, and uh, and he he focused on how to apply the systems approach to uh, the perioperative uh, scenario. So that's like uh is like the uh, the um, the period of time before and after surgery, um, and and he was his emphasis was on trying to use system engineering tools to uh, minimize the uh, reliance of, of of patients on uh, opioid uh, pain medication following surgery, um, and so he he walked through the entire system life cycle and applied it to that perioperative scenario. You know? um, so that's a that's an example of a capstone for um, you know somebody who's a, a practicing clinician, um, the, the first one that, that I mentioned, uh, the supply chain one, the individual happened to be a clinician also, but that's more of a uh, hospital operations management rather than a clinical uh, capstone uh, related theme. Um, but, um, but both of those kinds of things are, and, and many other kinds of themes are, are possible um, to pursue uh, through the capstone. Great, thank you for that, Alan. Um, we have an additional question from Leah. I have previous work experience in surgery and now work in medical devices robots. Do you see this degree being beneficial? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, the, uh, you know, I, I'll say this, that the, um, the program is, uh, well, I'm thinking of, I'm, uh, when I look at medical devices and robo robots, um, and applying it to surgery, I, you know, I think very technical solutions and technology is important to this program. Um, but I would say that it's the only thing this program will focus on and make you, um, you know, and and and, and help you, um, you know, um, dig deeper into. Um, what we what we speak to is the fact that technology is important, but it's not the only thing, and that culture workflow the environment of care, all that stuff, regulation, financial models, all those kinds of things factor into what, a, what an ideal solution is uh, to improve uh, current state. And so, um, so you know, just kind of like thinking more about your, your experience in surgery and medical robotics and devices, uh, I think that background in terms of that kind of technology would be useful. Um, it just, I just want to highlight the fact that this is, this is the, you're going to learn skills that go beyond the technology um, and, and, and factor in all these other, other, other aspects of the, the healthcare uh, environment that, that matter. Sounds good. Great. The next question, Bonnie, um, she heard you mention a physician participated and does she understand correctly that an engineering degree is not required for admission? Right. Um, so we have uh, a number of, of uh, students that um, are clinicians, but we have a number that are, um, and, and we have a number that are that have technical backgrounds uh, in science or engineering. Um, but we also have folks that have, you know, have have uh, maybe come from a, a really different area, a different field, um, but maybe they have some work experience that's applicable, relevant. Um, maybe they uh, maybe they have more of a business administration type of background, but they've worked in a hospital setting. Um, and so those are factors that we'll consider uh, in the um, in the application review process. The key thing here is, is that uh, you know we're looking for um, you know, for, for individuals that um, you know, become maybe come from more of a technical side, um, as well as healthcare professionals and healthcare professionals ranging from um, administration to clinical. Um, we're looking for individuals that are passionate about uh, onboarding the systems uh, engineering approach. Uh, the skills and the tools to try to change the system from within. Um, and those are the kinds of things we're looking for in, uh, in the application review process. All right, great. Thank you for that, Bonnie. I hope that answers your question. Do we have any other questions from the audience this evening? If not, I'm going to put the website in the chat. You can go there for, for more information about student services, lifelong learning, admissions and aid. Um, all those, all that information is, is listed there. Um, we do have another one. How would you compare this degree with an MBA in healthcare in terms of employment outlook? Yeah, so um, 
so the so for an MBA, um, I think you're mainly focused on you know the business side of of you focus mainly on the business side of healthcare. Um, the um, this is you know this program is more about understanding the system life cycle, um, about understanding how you know how uh, the process and methodologies for envisioning a future state, um, and understanding the current state in a very thorough way, and then using um, you know tech tools such as modeling and simulation um, and trade-offs analyses um, and whatnot to uh, understand uh, you know end user requirements, um, and then. Uh, go a level deeper into specification and how you go about doing test and evaluation um, of, of potential solutions and then integrating those into the operational environment. Um, so I think that there maybe the MBA and, and this degree are basically uh, maybe like a little bit of uh, two sides of the same coin. Um, you need, you know, you need be people with the skills in, in all those areas. Um, and uh, yeah, and I see there's a, um, Another question here about uh, peer review publications. Is there an opportunity for that? Um, well, I'll just say there's not a requirement for that. Um, and that's not, um, you know, it's, none of the courses will, will um, you know, include uh, that as part of the, ex uh, or, you know, required part of the experience. Um, I'll say that, you know, the, it's certainly an opportunity uh, when the capstone, you know, at the completion of the capstone that you'll potentially have enough content for, um, you know, publication externally. The, um, but, uh, you know, as far as peer review publications go, I think, you know, I think in terms of that's generally oriented towards research, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't really a research um, um, masters, right? This is more of an applied um, engineering type of uh, uh, program. Great, thanks for that. The next question, what's yep. the difference between the certificate program and the master's degree? Yeah, so, um, some of our companion programs offer certificates um, alongside their master's degrees. Um, our healthcare system engineering program only offers the master's at this point in time. Um, and in the future, we're considering a certificate, but uh, we don't do that at this point. Okay, thanks for clearing that up for us. Do we have any additional questions at this time? Don't see anything in the q and I don't see anything in the chat. All right, Alan, do you wanna, do you have any final things you'd like to say before we close the session out this evening? Well, just uh, thank everybody for your their interest um, and uh, you can feel free to reach out if you have any other uh, questions that come up uh, as you're thinking through this. Um, I encourage you to take a close look at the website um, that describes the program um, and just overall, uh, you know, for like general questions related to, you know, uh, transfer of credits or financial aid and whatnot, there's some frequently asked questions um, that are available through the website, uh, through the Whiting School EP program. And, uh, you know, I encourage you to use that as a resource to, um, to uh, you know, learn a little bit more. Yes, thank you all for joining us this evening. If you have any additional questions, I'm going to put my email address in the chat. And my name is Leona Teal. If I can't answer the question, I will get it to someone who can. Um, feel free to go to the website to check out, as Alan mentioned, some additional information. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all in our virtual classrooms. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks, Alan. Yep, thank you, everybody.